Hello everybody, Rifle Chair here. I just want to take a few minutes to maybe talk to you a little bit about the greeting of firearms. Certainly in my experience um, over the last, well, I'll say about 20 years, I have occasionally came across firearms online and uh, looked them up, talked to the, uh, to the seller to discuss, you know, base, basic condition and um, made, a, made an educated decision from, from that point on and uh, decided to buy it get all excited you know it's it's on its way to me in the mail it's been described as very good or excellent condition and suddenly the post office person is at the front door knocking on the door and you receive the package you signed for it you excitedly take it downstairs to your man cave open up the box and uh, get disappointed because of corrosion or uh, not as described all these different kinds of things can they suddenly um dawn on you that uh yeah, really, you've, you've been taken for a bit of a turn. And there is a, a Latin phrase for this, known to many as caveat emptor, or buyer beware. And it seems to me that currently, probably because of the uh, you know, the e economic situation in Canada and the United States, is that uh, everybody that has a military surplus firearm in their closet seems to be pulling it out, dusting it off, throwing some uh, WD-40 on it and selling it, and uh, claiming that it is in better condition than it really honestly it is. And I don't, I don't think it's necessarily uh, a guilty mind at work here, but certain, certainly just unaware. they're not aware of what constitutes a firearm that is in very good or excellent condition. So what I'd like to do is talk to you a little bit here today is uh, the, N the NRA Modern Gun Condition Standards. And uh, these uh, this is basically a universal grading system that you can use in order to, to determine basic information so far has been able to put your finger on the condition of that, that firearm. And an accurate description of a gun's condition is essential in evaluating a firearm and estimating the value of any gun. Now differences in condition can easily half or double the value of a collectible gun, and some of them are very, very expensive. And in terms of evaluating firearm conditions, there, there are certain grades that have specific meanings, and the most widely used set of standards for grading firearms conditions is that defined by the NRA. And they, they built these many, many years ago, and I'm surprised that more people aren't using them. What I'm hoping that you will, um, what, what you'll notice is that there's going to be all kinds of different images flashing up in front of you, kind of in what I would consider to be the, um, the proper light conditions for you to take a picture of, of a military surplus firearm. And kind of look at the, the, uh, the pictures uh, provided here and while you're while you're while these things are drifting past you on the screen try to think about okay if I was going to place a condition standard in, a, in association with the NRA gun condition standards if I was going to place a, a rating on on this firearm what kind of a rating would I put on it um, I'm going to throw a couple of uh, pictures in here which should make you suddenly pay attention and um, and question the condition of this firearm all right, these these are these are firearms that uh, have passed through through my hands. I don't necessarily have them anymore, but uh, um, these are these are firearms that have passed through my hands, and and they have varying levels of quality or condition. So pay attention to those. So where do I find the the NRA condition codes? Well, it just so happens that there is a website, and the website address is www nramuseum.org nramuseum.org and there you'll see all these different tabs and whatnot um, however just just pick the right tab for firearm conditions and you'll see everything described in some detail um, you may have certain questions on okay what is the collectability or the collector value of my firearm those aren't the kinds of things that I want to go into uh, in this video because that's an entirely different world and there are specialists for certain things, or certain types of firearms, certainly there are for military surplus firearms. You may have a real gem there, or maybe a very common piece which has been butchered, rebuilt, uh, reblued. You know, uh, it could be non-matching numbers. It could be an, a multitude of different things that are going to have a, a value on the collectability of the firearm. However, there are th certain resor resor resources out there for you. You'll need to do some research. There are numerous books that you can purchase. That'll give you some some details. Um, have a look at Amazon.com. Uh, type in uh, into the search browser what you're looking for, and, and things will show up. Uh, maybe perhaps you know a firearms uh, collector. 
that you can present the, uh, the firearm to and they'll be able to give you a bit of a detailed analysis and recommendations based on market value. There are also uh, numerous online forums. Google is going to be your friend here. Uh, type in what you got uh, and, and, and followed by value or collectability and you'll see all kinds of things pop up. Uh, Google is your friend. Um, but the focus for this video is condition assessments and the things that you want to try to pay attention to. Um, first of all, let's, let's start off with, uh, with photography. Generally what we're going to be doing here um, for this video is we're talking about an online advertisement. Um, so getting a decent image of your, uh, of your military surplus or service X service uh, platform is pretty important. Um, and based off the information that you, you provide um, and, and the assessments of the details that you provide, you'll, you'll be able to arrive at uh, hopefully a sale. But the presentation is very important when you're taking a picture. Uh, <clears throat> I highly recommend that you use a decent digital camera. I mean, they're everywhere now. Don't use a webcam. I know you old farts out there that don't, don't seem to be too technologically... Uh, that you, I mean, you're technolo technologically challenged, that's fine, but uh, don't use a webcam, please, because you're almost misrepresenting what you've, what you've got because the quality of the image is so poor. Um, if you don't have any pictures, to be honest with you, most folks won't, won't make first contact because uh, that's pretty much the industry standard. You take a picture of what you're trying to sell, okay? And if you don't, you're not going to have a lot of luck. You can say that you have pictures available uh, to send by email, um, but again, I, I won't even bother making contact in those situations. Show a picture or, or go away. Um, there are some providers out there that will help you, like Photobucket. That seems to be quite um, uh, quite popular. There are some web web servers out there that you can pay for services. They're, they're, not, they're not very expensive. They're quite affordable now. Um, but, you know, again, Google is your friend. Uh, I recommend Photobucket because, as I understand it, it's free. There are services that you can pay for through Photobucket as well. Um, when you're taking pictures, I know it, it might be difficult for some of you, but it really it's, to be honest, it's best for you to go outside during high over, overcast conditions. And why do I say high overcast conditions? Well, generally when you have um, direct sunlight, you get shadows. And quite often the shadows will uh, will highlight... Um, imperfections uh, because you'll get shade casts and it looks a lot worse than what it really is. Again, you want, what you want to try to do is take a picture that is representative of the condition of the firearm that you're trying to sell. Um, you, don't want, you don't want it to look uh, better or you don't want it to look worse. You just want it to look realistic. Uh, it can be difficult for some of us to go outside to take a picture simply because maybe you don't like your neighbors or your neighbors don't like you and you know, having somebody running around in the backyard with a whole bunch of firearms can maybe cause some neighborhood concern. But generally, uh, if you don't draw too much attention to yourself, it's quite easily done. Um, the probably the most difficult thing to take a picture of, the most the most difficult thing to take a picture of is uh, is bore condition. Trying to get a picture from the receiver in through the barrel, you know, you'll see the rifling, you'll see whether or not it's black, you'll see whether or not it's um, shiny um, but really it's it's even when you're looking through the barrel with the naked eye sometimes it's very difficult to get a good good idea of what the uh, what the uh, the bore condition is um, and especially if, if you need if you need prescription lenses and whatnot that, that can compound it but what I have found works extremely well especially when you're in good light conditions outside is that if you take a picture of the muzzle or the crown from a say a 45 degree angle using your macro setting you can get amazing pictures that will that will uh, really help in your assessment of the bore condition. A picture is worth a million words, and and barrels or the bore condition can be very very difficult to assess. Um, so give this kind of stuff some some consideration if you're going to be taking, providing pictures. Get the best pictures that you can, um, and try to make them as re representative as you can. Okay, so what are the uh, the NRA condition codes? Now there are two conventions when it comes to the NRA uh, assessing the kind of giving you some some details to assess uh, gun condition. Um, the first one is modern gun condition standards, and the second one is antique firearm condition standards. Now I'm not going to go into antiques because again it's a different regime, it's a different world, 
Um, I'm going to focus on NRA modern gun condition standards. Even though this 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 uh, kind of the application that I'm I'm uh, using here are for X service or military surplus rifles or firearms, the NRA modern gun uh, condition standards still apply. You'll just need to be a little bit more critical on the detail. Um, because there's so many things that you have to take into consideration when you're assessing the uh, the condition of a military surplus firearm. For example, most of these things have uh, been in, in service with uh, an Army, Air Force, Navy of one type or another, and maintenance uh, procedures were not necessarily equally applied. And, uh, for example, there's a bunch of Romanian VZ-24s out there, or Czechoslovakian VZ-24s, Mausers, and uh, they all shot corrosive ammunition. They all used um, uh, steel um, cleaning rods from the muzzle end, and quite often the rifling at the muzzle are washed out. Many of them have been counterboard because of this problem. Uh, and really the same applies for Mosin the Gantz, of all uh, uh, manufacturer and model. Um, so let's go. Let's go into it, and just just m remember, you know, if you're into military surplus firearms, really, you need to be a part historian to understand some of the background and what is reasonable to expect from uh, for for the condition of the rifle. So there are a total of um, six conditions that the NRA uses for modern gun cons uh, conditions, and starting at the top is new, second is perfect, third is excellent. Fourth is very good, fifth is good, and last is fair. Now, you'll notice that there isn't a poor condition in here. They stop at fair. So why would that be? Well, basically, they consider fair condition to be in safe working condition. If you go to poor, it's basically a parts rifle or something that you can hang on, the, on, on your wall or have deactivated. It is not serviceable. It is not safe to fire. So all of these condition standards are applied to rifles that are safe to fire, or firearms that are safe to fire. Let's start at the top, new. New is not previously sold at retail, generally in the same condition as currently current factory production. So let's use an example. You Last year you bought yourself a Remington 700 and 30 out 6. It was intended for you to go out on a, uh, on a hunting trip, the hunting trip never never happened. You never took it out of the box. Um, it remains unfired. All of the all of the uh, components are, are still there. The box, the original box, is still there. You can actually advertise this as being new. Sure, you can. It's new in box. Never been fired. It means it's in the same condition as when the gun left the factory, with the accompanying box, letter, tree, accessories. We talked about that. And it's important to note that some of the older boxes uh, may have substantial value in and of themselves. And, okay, these, this has kind of kind of got to do with purists and whatnot, but they want everything to be original, uh, that it came with that, with that particular gun. How it was shipped, the serial number is often penciled on the bottom of the bo uh, end of the box uh, as it left the factory. And as to the condition of the gun itself, it must be, it must be unfired, it must be unused. Um, having taken it out on a hunting trip and it's got a couple of uh, scratches on it because, you know, you lean it up against a rifle or a, a tree and it fell over, that's no longer new. So don't describe it as new. Um, there we go. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Next on the, uh, on the condition scale is perfect. Now, for all intent and purposes, perfect is new condition in every respect. And most people, they have a tendency to describe this as new, which is fine. You can do that. It's it's almost as new um, to describe the condition, but perfect is what the NRA uses. All right? I mean, it doesn't really get any more descriptive than that. Um, it may have... Uh, might, it may have been carried... It may, it may have been used to one degree or another, but for all intent purposes, it's it's a new rifle. There's no scratches, there's no blemishes, there's, it is as new. Next is excellent. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I have a cold and, and the uh, it's, it's difficult to talk. Excellent is new condition, used but little, no noticeable marring of the wood or metal. The blowing is perfect. 
except there may be some uh, uh, some minor wear at the muzzle or on some of the sharp edges. Um, all the parts are original. Uh, it's in the original configuration. Um, basically nearly new condition, but you know there is some wear, very very minor wear. Generally uh, aesthetic kind of kind of wear. Um, the the NRA actually provides you with uh, a percentage of the original finish based on kind of the time era that it comes from, um, from pre eighteen sixty five all the way up to modern times. But I'm not going to go into that. If you really need to, uh, if that's a, a if that's if that's important to you, go to the website and have a look. Um, but for all intent purposes, uh, modern excellent rifles, the the blowing will virtually be perfect. Uh, again, at the muzzle or some of the sharp edges, there may be some blemish. Um, and it can be a little bit difficult to assess stainless steel. Um, the durability of the finish, can it can be difficult to assess. Um, but generally, uh, because they're stainless steel, it, the condition will be better, simply because there's so much more durable than, uh, than bluing or parkerizing kind of finishes. Okay, after excellent is very good. Uh, very good is described as in perfect working condition, no appreciable wear on the working surfaces, there's no corrosion or pitting, only minor surface dents or scratches. So it's uh, excellent working condition, but it may have a few uh, um, maybe small dents and whatnot and uh, blemishes on the metal. All the original major parts are there. Um, they must be in perfect working order. There's no corrosion, uh, corrosion or pitting, and I want to emphasize that, no corrosion or pitting. Um, some minor scratches. Um, well, pretty standard, pretty, uh, pretty straightforward, I think. Um, Again, I just like to emphasize that there's no corrosion on anything that is very considered to be very good. Next after very good is good. Safe working condition. Remember they well, we've talked about that. Safe working condition. It's got to be safe working condition for all of these grades. Um, minor wear to the surface free, uh, working surfaces. There are no broken parts, no corrosion or no pitting that will interfere with um, proper function. Now, when, when I'm talking about pitting or corrosion, Sometimes what you will see, and this seems to be most prevalent in the in the bore, from what I, from my own personal observations, is that you will see, um, and you know, let's let's make the assumption that you've actually put some rigor into cleaning the bore before you try to to, to perform an assessment of its condition. All right, I mean, you you get a barrel that's just lousy with copper fouling and um, and uh, and uh, and carbon fouling. How are you really going to honestly be able to provide a um, an accurate description of the bore? If it's dirty like that, but once you've got the bore cleaned and you, know, you you're able to spend some time to analyze it, if you see a frosty kind of appearance to the rifling and grooves, if you see dark grooves, um, it has kind of a pebbly appearance to it. Um, really closely examine the muzzle. I think we talked about that before, where you can actually get some light, so you can see what you're looking at. If you have a magnifying glass, pull it out and have a look. If the um, if the rifle is in very good, excellent, or newish uh, kind of condition, you should still be able to see some of the milling marks from uh, the manufacturing process. If you see kind of a pebbly, frosty appearance with um, with rounded rifling, well, geez, you know that's corrosion, and um, you you really should be sincere in your description of that. But even after going from new, perfect, excellent, very good, and good, we are still talking about no corrosion and no pitting. You should not see any of that. Next is fair. Safe working condition, but well worn, perhaps requiring replacement of minor parts or adjustments, which should be indicated in the advertisement. Remember, fair description. There is no rust. But there may be some corrosion pits which do not render, render the article unsafe or inoperable. And I would say that probably 70 to 85% of all of the military surplus rifles that I have inspected fall within the fair category. Almost all of them, to one degree or another, 
have some corrosion or pitting or frosty appearance or pebbly appearance to the bore. Um, and, and right there, bang, you know you're in at least the fair category. Is it fully functional? Do all the parts match? Well, they, they may or may not. However, you should, uh, you should uh, note in your advertisement whether, whether there are replacement parts, like a, a different bolt in the advertisement it should be safe to fire which means you're going to do your due, due diligence and assess the the headspace is is fine um and i'm not going to get into headspace do a google search headspace you'll find out what that is it's basically got to do with the dimensions of your chamber chamber specifications um, and if you're not sure take it to a qualified professional to do the assessment and it could be a gunsmith anyway the last thing you want to do you say that a rifle is, uh, is safe to fire when it's not. If you sell that thing and, um, and describe it as uh, fair or better, you're saying that it is safe to fire. I mean, you've you got to take some responsibility for your description. Yeah, okay, the buyer also has some, some, um, some responsibility to ensure that before they take it out to the range, it's, it's not going to blow up in their face. I mean, certainly if there are, are factors of wear, it's high, there's some high wear on, on, the, uh, on the firearm, you know, you should be able to identify that, and there should be question marks, all right? There should be little question marks or light bulbs suddenly appearing over your heads. Geez, you know, maybe I should have somebody look at this before I take it out to the range. Having a, uh, a, a case head separation or um, extreme high uh, uh, chamber pressures because the barrel is so badly um, corroded and fouled um, is very, it's, it's, it's unsafe. And it is incumbent on the seller and the buyer to make sure that the item is properly described. It's safety. Nothing is more important than safety. I mean, honestly, shooting for many of us is kind of a family-oriented experience. And can you imagine if you had your child out there shooting this thing and it blew up in their face, permanently disfigured or uh, disabled for the remainder of their life for something that you should have been able to assess properly or have somebody that knew what they were doing assess? Spend the time, maybe a few extra dollars to make sure it's safe. You may, after having sold a rifle that is unsafe to fire, find that uh, you'll have a legal action against you. Now, okay, so somebody may have had this thing blow up in their face. It's one thing. But so this could have been advertised as an extremely high-value uh, firearm. Some of these things go for an exorbitant amount of money. And if you have inappropriately described the condition of the firearm, you very well may have a complaint or a legal action against you. Okay, so let's, let's do a little bit of a recap. But be, uh, before I do that, um, let's just talk a little bit about this, these codes a little bit further. There's absolutely no reason why you can't say, for example, that 70% um, of the bore is very good, but the last 25% of the bore is good to fair. That's a perfectly reasonable thing to say, especially near the muzzle. That seems to be quite often with these service rifles, um, where the majority of the wear seems to be, you will see some uh, throat erosion in some of these rifles. Remember, some of these things have seen an, an exhaustive amount of ammunition. The old cordite ammunition, which burnt extremely hot, was very difficult on, uh, on the throats of these rifles. And the throat is basically the lead ahead of where the chamber is. Um, immense heat, immense um, friction, um, and quite often you will see some... some uh, wear in that area. Especially important to, to make notice when you're running a patch up and down the barrel. There will be areas where it is, you're almost getting no contact. But you're going to get some resistance as you're running a patch up and down the barrel. Make note of areas where it's really, really easy to pass that, um, that patch through. It's likely telling you that there's excessive wear in those areas. If you're getting excessive uh, resistance to a patch, it probably has something to do with corrosion. An extremely rough surface area will grab at the patch, and it'll be more difficult to pass through. So that's uh, pretty much it from the Rifle Chairs YouTube channel. I hope this was useful. And for me, the uh, the purpose of this particular video is to try to save sellers and buyers a lot of headache simply by uh, 
giving you a little bit of rigor when it comes to dis the, the description and the details in the advertisement which you've, which you, which you've put up tr to try to sell a firearm. Um, as described, is so important, and it will give you an amazing um, uh, feedback trader rating. If you're able to do these things, um, pay attention to the people that have a good feedback tr trader rating and uh, try, to, try to give them um, uh, the time, even if, it, even if it means paying a little bit more, at least you know you're going to get what you want or what you're looking for. Okay, Rifle Jerry signing off. Cheerio, folks. Hope you had a good time. Bye-bye.